All right, in this video lesson, we'll take a closer look at the Pythagorean identity. Well, early on, when we looked at the Pythagorean theorem, we all learned a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But there's actually two more versions of the Pythagorean theorem. If we were to take a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and subtracted a squared on both sides, then we'd have b squared isolated. A new form, a different version of Pythagorean's theorem. b squared equals c squared minus a squared. And if I did the same thing, started all over, and this time subtracted b squared on both sides. This instance, we would isolate a squared for a different version, a third version. a squared equals c squared minus b squared. And the benefit of having this is, we would typically apply Pythagorean's theorem when working with right triangles. And in a right triangle, our three sides would traditionally be labeled A, B, and C. And so we would have a version of Pythagorean's theorem designed just for solving for a particular variable. But now when we look at the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 deal is we're going to do the same thing. If I was to subtract sine squared theta on both sides, we'd have a new version of the Pythagorean identity. This version has cosine squared isolated. Or we can do the same thing and this time subtract cosine squared theta on both sides, leaving us a third version of the Pythagorean identity. In this case, we're isolating the cosine and the sine. But the problem is, there's actually six different trigonometric functions. Unlike Pythagorean's theorem, where we only had three sides to isolate, here in trigonometry, we've got six trigonometric functions. And of course, our six trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So far, we only have versions that isolate sine and a version that isolates cosine. So we're missing versions that have anything to do with the other four remaining trigonometric functions. So we'll look to create other versions that will include these other four trigonometric functions. So we learned earlier that all six of our trig functions could be written in terms of x and y. We also learned that the r in all of these represents the radius, and the radius in the unit circle was exactly one unit, so therefore r in all of these expressions equaled one. So if I simplify, that means sine of theta would simply be the same thing as the y coordinate, and cosine would be the same thing as the x coordinate. So if I took all of the other trig functions and begin to incorporate from the x and y's to the sines and cosines. So if I started with tan theta, we see here it's y over x, but y is the same as sine, cosine same as x. So I could rewrite tangent theta in terms of sine and cosine. I can continue. If I chose cosecant, cosecant, r and y, well, the r was 1 and the y could be replaced with sine. So we now have cosecant written in terms of sine and cosine. We'll transition to secant. Secant was r over x. x was cosine, so 1 over cosine. Cotangent. Cotangent was x over y, so cosine over sine. So we now have all six of our trigonometric functions rewritten in forms of x and y. So here's our six of them. Sine was just sine. Cosine was just cosine. We saw that tangent was sine over cosine. Cosecant was the reciprocal, so 1 over sine. Secant reciprocal of cosine, 1 over cosine. And cotangent was cosine over sine. So this will help us to develop the four new versions of the Pythagorean identity. So here we go. Our original version of the Pythagorean identity was sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. We just created two additional versions that had the sine squared isolated and the cosine squared isolated. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the original version. And we learned back in algebra when solving equations, we're allowed to do anything we want on both sides as long as we did it on both sides. So what I'm going to do is we're going to divide each of the three terms by sine squared theta and then simplify and see what happens. Well, sine squared theta over sine squared theta, that's just one. Cosine squared over sine squared, well, we just discovered earlier that sine, cosine over sine is cotangent. So, cotangent squared. There's our new the introduction of an additional trigonometric function. Now we have 1 over sine. We discovered that 1 over sine was cosecant. So we've got cosecant squared. So now we have an additional version. This time we've got cosecant squared isolated. Well, I can take this equation and then isolate the cotangent by subtracting 1 on both sides. Now we have another version. Cotan squared equals cosecant squared theta minus 1. And in this case, the cotangent is isolated. So now we're going to do the exact same thing. We'll start with the original version of the Pythagorean identity. The first instance, we divided everything by sine squared. Now we'll divide everything by cosine squared and then simplify. Well, we've got sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Let's check our resource. Sine over cosine was tangent. So this simplifies to tangent squared theta. Of course, cosine squared over cosine squared is 1. 1 over cosine, let's check the resource. 1 over cosine is secant. So this simplifies to secant squared. So we have an additional version of the Pythagorean identity. And in this case, we're isolating secant. So let's take this version and let's isolate that tangent. Subtract one on both sides leaves us with a new version. Tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta minus 1. So now let's list all the different versions. There's our last version. So the seven versions of the Pythagorean identity. The original. So when one is asking, what's the Pythagorean identity? This is the version you give. But you are aware that there's six additional versions. One version for each of the six different trigonometric functions. We saw the first version. If we just isolated the sine squared theta, we were left with 1 minus cosine squared theta. If we isolated the cosine, we were left with 1 minus sine squared theta. We saw previously, if I divided everything by cosine squared, that helped us to create tangent. That gave us our tangent squared theta, the secant squared theta minus 1. We did the same thing. We were able to isolate cosecant, 1 plus cotan squared. Secant squared theta has its own, tan squared theta plus 1. And the last, cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus 1. So in this video lesson, we're being presented a little closer at the Pythagorean theorem, like the, sorry, the Pythagorean identity, like the Pythagorean theorem, has several versions. Each version is used when you're working with very specific information.